This is all handcrafted steel. Yeah. There's a lot of magnificent fab work under here. That The Roadster Shop, Colorado. Or as they say, Caller Rad. I don't know your history with this thing. I just, I'll touch on mine just because I have some too. But I think 2015 is when they finished. When did they finish it? It was, it was actually a, a vehicle that Chevy gave them. Okay. At the time, you know, the 2015, which was a new body style Colorado. Was yes, out. yes. So this was one of those project vehicles to kind of debut that 2015 Colorado Perfect. body style. So I remember following this on Instagram because I love Roadster Shop and now I really love Mike that's over there. Um, and he does a lot of their prototype stuff, but Roadster Shop is widely known in the hot rod community and pro, not, not so pro known tour. in the off road community. Yeah, let me yeah. for it. But they, um, I just, I'm, I haven't seen it except for now and today, and uh, it's like it's really special. But I remember following it because it was an extensive build, just like everything else they did. But it was like the right off the bat, the frame, like everything was obviously one off for this project, just like they do some of their special stuff. But I know they also do like production chassis. That's what they're known for, but yes. I remember the frame on this thing was like this crazy, it wasn't just like, like Jimmy would do with plate, you know, and have a traditional functional shape, or, or someone would do with tube, but it was more of like, it almost represented an OEM style, almost like hydroform, but it had kind of those same structures with like inner structure. Yes. It's, it's similar to what they would do in some of their, I mean, though they build million dollar yeah. street rods. Street yeah. What do you call it? Muscle cars. Sure. Yeah, so, that's pretty yeah. much what they're, for, right? they're known for, right? That's what they're known for—just right. unbelievable detail and you know, wide body stuff, and all you know, just the the design and the functionality is is mainly you know, like I said, million dollar muscle cars. So yeah. I followed them too. I thought yeah. it was pretty cool. They yeah. they they always do these SEMA builds. Well, this was one of their SEMA builds. So in 2015. Uh, like you said, the, the, they built this thing in four months, from yeah. August till SEMA. Dude, that's, that's, that's crazy. I mean, it was, that's, yeah. that's in-house resources. Yes. You wow. Like, yeah. Their, yeah. their stuff is, they have a huge facility, and yes. it's like turnkey. It's hey. actually in Illinois, you know, you in go. Chicago. Like, the Midwest, okay. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. upper Midwest. Okay. Um, so anyway, these guys, and I, I got to know them a little bit, yeah. uh, trying, to, trying to get this thing. I saw it at SEMA. And it was one of those things where I love pre-runners. Yeah. And this was the most over-the-top pre-runner thing I'd ever seen in my Forger. life. Right? Forger. 2015. Yeah. And it was it's super wide. Yeah, and there's, there's some things about it. But what I like about this truck is this is all handcrafted steel. Yeah, that's what I was going to touch on. You know, so yeah. the, all, it, there's no fiberglass on this truck. So right. they took it and they, you can see where they molded everything and blended in, which is to your liking, obviously, yeah. right? Yeah. They, they built some some things and designed some things. But what I like about this truck is they gave me the CAD drawings to it. So I oh, have nice. Of the CAD. So you see every detail that they did planning this thing sure. come to yeah come to come to realization. But me being a design guy, I appreciate what they put into this thing and how you how it came from CAD to this right. So yeah, because yeah. it because so so Roadster Shop. You know, hey guys. So here we are. This is the Colorado. This is what you Colorado. guys have been Colorado with a capital R A D in there. Um, this is what you guys have been waiting for. Uh, this is definitely a different type of build. We've never featured something so one-off like this. So it is really cool, Thomas. Thank you so much for sharing this with us. This it's thing, my pleasure. This thing's really cool. Um, I didn't even know. Uh, we didn't know who owned this thing. I think we've just kind of seen pictures here and there on the internet. And uh, I know uh, people uh, have sent this in to Terra Crew asking us to try to get some info on this truck because because they're uh, Colorado fans and enthusiasts. Yes, there are some out there that, that want to build some pre-runners, but I don't think we've yet to even see a Colorado ever built on the channel and like this. So this is really, really cool, and, and I'm stoked to have Morgan here to go over it with Thomas. Well, I haven't been hiding it. Yeah, okay. okay. I just haven't used it because it's too cool to take out beat up, right? Okay. So, 
So I do plan on doing something. I brought it here. It was in Texas at my place in Texas. Okay. I brought it out here probably a year or so ago with the hopes of taking it to the sand. Okay. Uh, I haven't made it out there yet. So got well, battle well, tires over there. One of these days we'll go out and take it in the sand. It's essentially ready to go. It's just I have okay. other things that we've been doing. So Right on. Yeah. Well, definitely. Hopefully we can head out there with Thomas and we can get some action shots of this thing. I know after SEMA, I think they, they did take this thing out once, right? Do just, that, what, they were one doing, what they were doing was driving it back. Okay. I, I bought it by then because it only took a few days. Oh, so you oh, fell in yeah. love, dude. But, okay. But, yeah. That's cool. No, it was, like it was one of those things where I got to have that. Yeah. yeah. So I had to go find them, run around, find them. We talked about it two or three times in passing at SEMA while they were doing This was one of the top 10 builders yeah. at that nice. part of that, part of that thing that SEMA was doing at that time. Battle of the Builders, right. All right, is SEMA still doing that? Yeah. I don't know if they're doing it now. Yeah, but, it's a little tricky because yeah. I, and I don't, don't, I'm not a huge SEMA guy, but just what I saw Big last guy. year. Big SEMA guy. <laughs> yeah. I, Morgan and I went for the first time last year, <laughs> and I remember texting Thomas like, hey buddy, we're here. He's like, yeah, same stuff, I'm out of here. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding, guys. We're, we're just kidding. SEMA's awesome, but you know, Thomas had spent a couple days there and checked out some stuff. But for I, me and Morgan kind of going in there, I mean, me, I'm just, I, I, don't, I, I don't know anything. So I, I was like a kid it. in it. I follow it. Well, I you have to understand that I did, with NFAB, I did SEMA. A lot. Yeah. Well, I'm, right. I'm trying to think 14, 15 years in a row. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. So I'm not saying it's the same thing, but it's the same concept, kind of stuff. There's right. always great stuff there, right? And but it's but not enough pre runners. Not, not enough, enough pre-runners. Pre yeah. See, I think if they had more pre-runners, that would this, be awesome, right? Right, year. Morgan? Next year? Yeah. Dude. There, there will be several next year. We, we, we have some goals, guys. We have some cool goals this next year. And, they're and, not goals. Oh, they're, they're missions. Yes, they're missions, yes. <laughs> <laughs> we're, not, we're not working We're on making goals. it happen, guys. We're gonna yeah. get some rad Morgan Clark pre-runners out there, um, you know, and uh, I'm really excited, man. So good stuff. If you guys wanna see some builds at Morgan Shop, at SEMA, let us know, comment below. Um, but, but yeah, send Morgan some motivational uh, speeches. Let's do it, let's do it. Some coffee. <laughs> Whatever those look like. <laughs> Hell yeah, guys, so so let's uh, let's talk about this, man. Um, so basically you found the owner, so that's a crazy story. You've seen it, you the fell brothers, in love yeah, with it. Gerbers, okay. The Gerbers, yeah. Um, okay. But yeah, I, I, I reached, them, reached them out. This was actually in the GoPro booth. Okay. At SEMA, so it was not even in the truck hall. It was in it was in the I south hall, I believe. Yeah, yeah. it had the livery on it. Yeah, yeah. So um, found them. Um, they were doing things. We figured it out on the way back. They went to Delmont Dunes mm -hmm. and did a little bit out there. They took it back because I wanted air conditioning. Mm. So they had to add. They had to come back, go take it back, add the air conditioning and something else that was minor. I can't remember, but um, okay. So I had a couple things. So they took it back there and uh, finished it up. Um, but if I remember right, I remember, you know, like, hey, here's the down payment. It's yeah. my truck, right? And, you know, like making sure that I secured this thing because yeah. I was afraid that somebody else would. Uh, That's where you know what Thomas loves pre -run. Yeah. So, <laughs> Tom, so you can you just feel like he loves and, and No, that's great, man. At, awesome. this, at this point, it might have five, seven miles on it. Okay. Okay. Just because man, I had to drive it back from Infab to my house one, at one point. Other than that, it's like it truly is like it's such a, a collector's vehicle. car. When you like, look up under, right. yeah, it's it's like again. I have other things that you can use, right? Mm -hmm. I just don't think, and I've I've caught some flack from this thing for this truck just sitting around. And there's always those people out there. Right. But when you're an enthusiast and you really like really nice, yeah, high end it's stuff, piece. it's a piece. Yeah, it's something Absolutely. that you love. Now, if somebody else wanted to buy it and take it out and use it, then it's fully capable, right. right? I want stuff that's authentic and capable, but it doesn't mean I want to take it out and be the Right, you, you want to appreciate it, it yeah, like for, appreciate for, for it. what it is. With it's how custom this is, like if you even look at this stuff, this is sheet metal. Like if you do something, you make a mistake, which mistakes happen off-roading. Like that's, yeah, if you, if it you just do one thing to this, you don't ever get this back again. Right. This is what you get. So right. it's an example and obviously it's functional and it's capable. It, you know, you got to take a risk assessment there. Like you're not, it's never going to be as good as it is right now if right. you start taking it out. Like period. Right, right. And, and I have other beautiful. things to take out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Obviously. Right, 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 yeah, right. Different right. tools right. for different right. things. Right. So, no, that's cool, man. I mean, uh, man, I, I, of course, of course we want to see this thing work, but I think the sand dunes would be a, a, a safe spot. You yes. know what I mean? You're not worrying about big rocks. We could have some fun. You could even get, get some whoops and going. And it's, have been, some fun. it's been around for a while. I've enjoyed yeah. it. So we need to take it out and use it or yeah. sell it. That's the best bet, I think. Do something so. else. 
Man, it's almost like a, like a, a mold almost needs to be made of this. You know, I mean, like, <laughs> I know it's crazy. I know I'm more. more like, oh, I, mean, look, I know all, all our all our fiberglass friends are like, you're an idiot, James. But but you know, it's just it's such an I've awesome thought about piece. Making you know, a mold and changing them a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. In order to in order to make it more, so you can take it out and use it. I yeah. thought of that, and even talked to a couple fiberglass guys about it, and they said, sure, we can do it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But then you always work on so many things. So right. what's, what's a priority? What makes sense? Well, there's a lot well, more details that even, you know, you take a mold of the fenders, that's one thing, but like even this detail, right. like this, it's so design oriented, like Rosary Shop kills it with design. And obviously I appreciate design, but even like this, this is sheet metal. Like, and it, it's like, it's OEM style. Like this is your big 316s or quarter steel or aluminum. That's aluminum, yeah. But this, this is sheet metal. So like even hitting that, like But if you look at the detail, it's just not flat. They, they do so much detail it's the way it's, yeah, it's yeah. And that's, but that's what I'm getting. Like this stuff is not just a consumable. Right. And you can see all of this yeah. on YouTube. Yep. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you can see how this thing's built. Just look up Colorado Pre-Runner. Okay. You know what I mean? Something like that on YouTube. And this thing comes up and like you can see when they built, like even these things, this is metal. I mean, yeah. that's a lot of detail. Yeah, every, the, it's a gone through vehicle, right. for sure. Well, well I, I so think... Basically, all that's a Colorado now is the hood. That's stock, right? right? It's the hood, besides this piece, and the cab, the doors, yeah. and some of the dash. Yeah. Because the motor's been moved way back. Right. And the motor's, you know, uh, just like any pre-runner would, because it's a center mount. Yeah. So, other than yeah. that, that's all that they use out of the stock truck. Yeah, yeah. You know, the fender, rear fenders are rebuilt, but all that stuff can, like I said, can be viewed. Before yeah. Before we put it on the rack, we should kind of do, oh, you know. Yeah, Morgan, here, I'm going to, I'm actually going to, I'm going to hand this off to Morgan. This should have been in Morgan's hands, but, uh, uh Morgan, well, why, yeah. why, why don't you take, I want to take, here. take you guys through this thing, and uh, Morgan will see some things that are appreciated a little more than, than I would. This is one I can really get into, and um, I don't know how far we go with that, just because, uh, you know, I'm pretty broken as far as talking and talking and talking. Uh, but so powertrain, I mean, obviously roaster shop started this thing, Colorado, a stock cab, just probably just got a cab from, or did they give them the whole truck? They gave them a the whole truck. Okay. And then yeah. they just kind of dissected what they needed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, roaster shop is known for full digital stuff. Like he talked about with the cab stuff. So they packaged in an LS, which stays true to form with a Chevy and a GM. A built LS7, yeah. Yep. Built LS7 with a dry sump, right? Yes. Dry sump in the rear. Uh, Fox package. Center mount, the, the arms, the one thing, we'll, we'll get into the engine compartment. Well, I guess we can cover that when it's on the lift, the bottom part. But, um, you know, there's, there's just endless amounts of detail in here. I love that all the bolts are 12 point, uh, you know, aircraft cert bolts. And they're like used everywhere. I noticed on the inner fender, there's like little quarter 20s in here. Just, you know, like that's a, that's a small 12 point. But just those little details are awesome. Um, it, it's almost reminiscent of like a, a factory vehicle, you know, yes. if, it, if it maybe had inner fenders, like where it kind of covered it, you know, cause now you open a lot of engine bays and it's all like, it's hard to even see an engine sure. in there. Um, uh, but it's, it's, a uh, just, you know, their finish work is, there's something to be said, like how all the mesh is in here. Like it's just, it's been dialed. It's pretty dusty though, Thomas. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> it's beautiful. So, I mean, you know, right off the bat, obviously the fenders like that's kind of the pronounced thing you see with yes, this. Yes, that and how wide it is. Yeah, yeah definitely. I mean, it's, it's super wide, which is good and bad, I guess, but um, I think it really overstates, you know, what a center mount is. Yeah. And, and uh, sometimes overstating things is cool, and I think this thing's cool. Yeah, I totally agree, and they did it right. Like when we'll start, we'll look at the suspension when we have it on the lift, but it's done right. Like it's, they obviously worked with someone, and I don't know exactly who designed that whole well, front end. Well, I know that they had vehicles that they were taking out to Glamis, you mm -hmm. know, Class One style cars. Yeah. And uh, they they were into Glamis, and, and I think still are to this day. I don't know what they have right now, but um, that's kind of their passion too. So they wanted to build something like this. Yeah, and they did their time. research. They definitely did their they research. Know, they, they obviously know things about something like this, this kind of vehicle besides, but they're really good at what they do. And I think it, it shows in this. And, and if you go to the Roadster shop and see what they build, it's crazy. Like they have a Pantera build that, that one day I would love to have. Yeah, all their, well, you hear that? You hear that, you guys? <laughs> I think all their stuff, they're, they're kind of at the top of the food chain as far as you know custom builds and whatever they get their hands on. It is. It's, it's, it's an art piece, you know. Yeah. It's a, it's an example of, you know, it's it's like 
they got an opportunity and obviously working with General Motors too and, and to build something like this and they're like, look what we can do. Look at what we can make of this Colorado. Right. And they did and it's something special where it's, it's just not as, I don't think it's built to be thrashed on. It just doesn't make sense. Uh, yeah, no, and I think that's, that's a point, you know, that it is, it is a functional piece. It's not that it's I mean, just. I it's got camber hubs, camber rear end, yeah. Fox shocks. These are trail ready, custom built. The guy at trail ready did me some 11 inch wide rear um, bead locks. Yeah. And then eights in the front. Just to get the, the offset a little bit. Yeah, try to get the offset yeah. a little bit more. This um, still is impressive, you know. This actually is the same scheme. I just changed it to the, they, they actually did it at, at uh, Roadster Shop. Yeah. They used to have GoPro in the same thing, but yeah. I wanted, I thought there was some notoriety with this thing. Sure. So I had to do the same. Same scheme yeah, I just the, the shapes are really good, you know, and, and that's I, that's what impressed me the most when I saw it. I didn't know it was was steel until yeah. they pointed it out. Yeah, but but these this thing being all steel and handcrafted, yeah. I do feel like this is a handcrafted pre runner. It is. Yeah, you know I mean, so yeah. to a point when I bought this, I didn't have any of these other. So I just had kind of street trucks. Yeah. But I thought it was something that that really, I thought was just super cool. Absolutely. Right. And I always a geek on having a tailgate. I know. So that's pretty rad. I did not mean to say that. Like weird about saying rad when you talk about this thing. More dust. Yeah, that's awesome. And they've got a lot of OEM bed still tied into this thing. Like, there's a lot of factory bed. And right. You can see that they kind of added the fender wells. Have you tried to put a bigger tire on here? I have not. Okay. I wonder if it'll fit a bigger tire. Like just. Seeing, you know, that it's built for this thing. You can just see all yeah, the detail. There are only 37s. Mm -hmm. Nowadays. Nowadays, yeah. yeah. Everything's Trophy be trucks cool. were on 37s, and <laughs> now we're here. Yeah, there's just so much detail. Just, they've, they've just put it, and you know, that's what I always see is I notice design, and I notice how things flow, and I, Roadster Shop's one of my favorite follows, just right. to see their progress. Well, I think we're ready to put this thing up. I saw some running boards on there that look familiar, too. Oh, uh, let's look at your interior. So it does have four seats. The back seats are a little problematic. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, a full size human would fit back there. Yeah. It smells like a brand new vehicle. Not an upholstered vehicle, like a brand new vehicle. That's the ACs in the middle. That's gotcha. where the AC is. That was their kind of improvision. Yeah, that's where they put the AC. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's got a real it stock front. feeling. Ooh, so it's got a cutting brake. It's got a cutting brake, yeah. Not just a handbrake, but oh, a cutting okay. brake. Yeah, so that's like a buggy situation. You, a lot of IRS cars have that, independent rear suspension car. So you can see here that it's noted left and then it's noted right. Um, so so if you push that thing, you're going to lock up your left. And if you pull it, you're going to lock up your right. And that's going to kind of upset the balance of the car. Yeah, it's beautiful. And, so, and then they've, looks like they've modified the dash pod on the driver yep. there. And then wrapped this thing in, in my favorite, which is suede there. But yeah, it's beautiful. It just, I mean, it feels very like OEM, not stock, but right. like like a manufacturer built this thing. You want to raise this thing up? That's a pretty good view. Yeah, so obviously there's a different perspective now to this thing where you can kind of see the see the inner workings. Right off the bat, you see huge center mount, center pivot, front suspension, and I. Even like the, the quality, uh, like the design in that, like the fabrication, like all the wraps and everything, like they've, they've really thought it through. Um, they took notes, like even if they were building muscle cars and pro touring and all that, they've, they've definitely like done all the homework to make sure they're building the highest caliber of their project. Um, and you can see that with all the wraps. The, I'm sure the question is going to be what's on the suspension and that's a clear powder coat. Yeah, Yep, and it's it kind of does that. It turns it into a warm color instead of like that kind of cold, hard, cool silver. It turns into like a warm color, but that's just that's what the powder coat does when it's baked onto the raw suspension, uh, and that's why you see all the heat marks everywhere, which is a, a really nice detail. So it's got a howl rack, and then you can see how they just designed all all this to to kind of tie it together. Yeah, yeah, and that's a that's a way to kind of do tabs where you can run your main stringer tubes and it really helps keep things square because then you can kind of just shlink, shlink, shlink and get the spacing right and you know they're all on point as long as 
as the two tubes are on point. Um, I did, I started to take a gander under this thing earlier with Thomas. I said, ooh, I gotta get that out of here because it was just, there's a lot of magnificent fab work under here that uh, I wanted to kind of share live uh, while we film. So it's a lot to take in, but I think what you want to kind of look at here is the frame rail. So you can see the bulkhead tubes there, and then you can see where it parts off. Uh, you can see obviously the headers, but then all of a sudden you get these frame rail additions. Normally the frame rail would be in this area. Yeah, in board a bit. it all the way to the outside. Yeah, and you know, I think that that, that makes it optimal for a cage tie-in too. I, I'll bet you that Probably, little, uh, yeah. that's the B-peeler there. But what you see is like you see your outside areas and then you see like all the supports. And like if you just kind of take a look at the symmetry of this thing, it's incredible. It's cool how the trailing arms, you know what I mean, are basically on the outboard when they made the, made the frame thinner, but it's yeah. right here. Yeah, like so you that's got a really great area. It's like that's a strong area, right, for this tie-in. You know, the, the further spread as far as width on the trailing arms out, they can go on each side of the chassis, the better. So they've obviously identified that, and then you can just kick the, the uppers inward there. But like the, you know, all of the uh, symmetry on here. The other thing I noticed right off the bat, like the provisions for the exhaust to go through here. Like that's fully, that's like a huge piece of tube right there. Um, uh, you, you just look at the details. Like and I would assume that that's the way they do it on their muscle cars. I think a lot of this is, is derived from right. how they do things no I've matter what. Because I've seen this on, this is like where they stiffen it up with these. Yeah, yeah. I've seen that on a lot of, like most of their chassis have this same. Yeah, like the slats right. like, yeah, that. like that. I mean, I guess that's the best term for that thing, but. Right. Yeah, it's just, it I'm is. I'm sure they get a better one. It's fully gone through, like, it's just, there's, it, it's so tidy. I think in a lot of that hot rod nature, like they, you don't see a lot of the detail, like I guess not the details, but you don't see like the wiring. You don't see a lot of the plumbing, like it, they've right. got a way where it's here, but they just have it fashioned in a way where it's not a focal point. You can see again to the trailing arms. So I think this is part of the branding of Roadster Shop. Um, the, the slats, I think that's part of their logo maybe too. Um, but you can see that kind of even, that design, that overlay even ties into like you know, what they have going on under here. So, like a countersunk skid plate here to protect the uh, the trans. Um, and like, I guess the pinion back there. And it's just, uh, it's very well sorted. But the cab is hard mounted, you know, it's not, mm -hmm. not like a soft mounted cab anymore. Yeah. So it is a hard mounted cab to the frame and obviously to the... Yeah, the, the whole body is tied in significantly. Right. And then I, I think, I know the guy who does, they use these, and I know the guy who does, who builds <laughs> yeah. these things. I just thought it needed something <laughs> to help protect it, you know what I mean, on the outside in case of a rock or whatever. So that, they built them so they're a little bit lower than the, the frame, but yeah. that was... That works. Yeah. Like, that really works. That was tasteful. I think you nailed it on that one. So you can see it's just, in, you know, like, like the kick on the rear frame here. I mean, it's got a significant kick for the up travel. Um, which is exactly how you kind of want to play that uh, if you're trying to re-engineer a factory frame right. um, for off-road. So it's just really tidy. You can see the dry sump tank up here. Uh, it looks like it's accessible through the bed, so you can kind of drain it down here and then you can fill it from the top. Yeah, they made it to where you could service it, like the mm -hmm. tank, can, this, the fuel tank can come down. You can see where the, uh, like you said, some of the wiring goes through the bed in the front right there. Yeah, a little you know, all the cabling there. and stuff yep. goes through instead of down the chassis. Yeah, it's so tidy. I mean, this is a nice piece. It is, it is. Same thing, so obviously the details, like the clear powder. Yeah, they always had to cut this out because of the where the frame comes mm -hmm, down. Mm -hmm. But this is a camber rear end with the camber hubs, front yeah. and back, Willwood brakes, front and back. Yeah, it's nice. I almost want to say it's a curry. Curry, I'm sorry, yeah. Because I can just kind of tell um, okay, by the look of it. Yeah, yeah, I just wanted to verify. It's got the hubs. Yeah, so it's curry. It's all curry. Trying and that's probably get, yeah. what they use on their, their street cars, right. you know, so that's the relationship there. Um, but it's just super tidy. Everything's just, you know, it's, it's even if it was dirty, it would still look tidy. It's a, it's a beautiful truck. You can talk about how... How hard is it to make metal bend and stretch and you know what I mean? That's, like this. that's what um, I, that's why I was saying when we talked about the wrap earlier, 
because I was just kind of touching the surfaces and I'm like, oh my gosh, like how, that's one of those things even for myself where I still have so much learning to do like with creating a shape like that and not only creating it, having it be perfect, but also have it have represent. It be, have one side be exactly the same as the other. Yeah, and represent like what it should look like on a Colorado. Right. You know, they nailed like the design where right. you can make a big voluptuous shape, but if you don't even know what you're doing with design, it's gonna shit the bed. Yeah. So it's just, it's, it's, a, it's gorgeous in so many ways, but yeah, like even the, the fender detail, you know, like that step right. here. The step there and then the, the indention like you have in the cab that comes back right here. Yeah, like those are gorgeous pieces right there. Whoever did that, I mean, right, awesome. That still lines up right here. Yeah, it does exactly what it's supposed yeah, to. Yeah, see like right there yeah. and then this goes up. I mean, that's, people don't realize. It's like one of those things that you see yeah. that you don't know. Yeah. That you're really, what you're really looking at. But exactly. That takes a lot of work right there. It does. It, I mean, it's that's hundreds of hours, probably in the thousands. And I also noticed like the, I really liked that pocket where the headlamp is, like the corner lamp. I think, it, I think it makes it, you know, like a Raptor, kind of lets the headlight be where it needs to be. Yeah, yeah, she's gorgeous. So this is the one that you want to try to take to the dunes, huh? Yeah, again, I think that's the place to take it to where um, it won't get beat up too much. Yeah, yeah. But we need to get some use out of it and do some, you know, maybe some filming with it just to... Actually, I just want to have to see what it'll do and how it handles compared to some of these other trucks. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And, he, and even when this thing starts, uh, it, it sounds, I mean, it just sounds like kind of like a nicely tuned Corvette, you know, like it's crispy and it's not like too loud or aggressive. And it's, it's like, again, like they, they nailed it in the sense of it being like almost a production, like GM came out with a pre-runner trailblazer, yeah. something like that, you know, and it's like, it's on that caliber where it feels that high end and, and every corner of it is like that. It's all addressed yeah, there's like nothing that. about it. I'm, you know, like I always want to change everything, but there's nothing about this truck that I've really changed since, uh, since owning it. I mean, other than little yeah. details like the wheels and a couple things, it's pretty much the way that they built it. Yep, and I just, I think there's some, so much to be said for something like that. That's when you know they've done, they've done their part on the build. You know, they, they did it. I just think, yeah, if you, if you, Changed anything? It's just not the same truck. Sure. Yeah, it's like it's taking some. It's as wide as it is, and all that stuff. It's yeah, it's a little over. Yeah. But it's it's tastefully done, so it, it just looks cool. Yeah. Just the way it is. Yeah, I think it's almost like taking someone's painting, and it, and you know you don't change the painting. If it's a good painting, you leave it. You know, it's it's, its own piece. Yeah. Every, every bit of this truck is is just fully gone through. It just there's no detail that's been like you know, um, not gone through. And it, it's impressive, to say the least. Even like how tidy all the, the lines are, how tidy all the brakes are. It's fully done right. I like this thing. Yeah. It's beautiful, man. Definitely a fan of it. People are gonna hate me for this, but I almost don't wanna see this go off road. I kinda wanna see it just preserved and taken care of. You know, I think it's, it's like you said, it's craftsmanship and it's something important, I think. In a lot of ways, it's cool to see guys in the Midwest, like, um, you know, do this kind of stuff. And I know uh, we have a lot of friends in the Midwest that have built some pretty cool builds. Actually, some builds I think that have been at SEMA. I know for sure Off-Road Expo. Um, our buddy Neil Griffin built some really cool stuff yeah. out there. But yeah, guys, if you guys want to see uh, Thomas maybe drive this thing in Glamis someday, he said he has some paddles, maybe we can try to figure that out. Let us know. Um, we do love the interaction with you guys. It's not just a plug to get you guys to, to engage, but it, it is cool. It's great to see um, your guys' responses and what you guys are thinking, what you guys want to see. So I think uh, that's, that's, that's the most appropriate it. place. I think that's like a, a wise move for this thing with the least amount of collateral damage is to yeah. get it in the sand dunes. And yeah. That's definitely where it can, it can show itself. For sure. This reminds me of kind of like the, my Frontier build a little bit because it's so different, you know? Um, and like my glass is, well, I have fiberglass, obviously. It's not man, man, like it's not steel. It's not as extensive not as this, right? It's not steel, but uh, I feel kind of like that one off kind of thing too, where it's like, you know, uh, it's just crazy. There's a lot of customization that kind of goes into that, so. For well, sure. I think we should thank Thomas. Yeah, yeah. hey, Thomas, thank you, man. Really no, it's my pleasure. Really no, I, I, I appreciate you guys showing this yep. stuff. And, yeah. and uh, you know, it's, it's something that's, like, what I heard you say this before, it's near and dear to my heart, and I love this stuff, and I'm more than proud and happy to, to yeah. show it off. And Absolutely. I appreciate what you're doing for the other truck. Yeah. We're, wow. we're looking forward to seeing more. 
you know, Absolutely. progress on that thing. And, Hell yeah. And I think if something's going to be special and better than this and better than that and better than that, you know, the Weitzel truck, I plan on using. Yeah. Your truck, I'm not sure. Hopefully we'll debut that at we SEMA have, next year. Yeah. yeah. And well, we'll really see what kind of special stuff we can do with that thing. Yeah, and I mean, even between you and I, Thomas, I'm super grateful for you having me do that thing. And I mean, it. so yeah. it's people, you know, and, and some people know my story. And, you know, James has been there from the start with me. But it, it's people like you that helped me in my life. Well, if you, you remember know. that I was like the first, but you came to this shop. Yeah, I know. And, and I that's, said, that's the I history. Said, I said, Morgan, you need to build that thing here. He's like, no, I'm doing my whole <laughs> thing up here. I'm, I'm going to get started. I yeah. promise you, give me a week. Yeah. And yeah. so, yeah. There Thank we go. you. Yeah, Thank no, you. Glad and it's just, it. It, you know, it is full circle because now we're here and Thomas is here and, you know, I have a relationship with him. And, uh, you know, James is my brother and we're yeah. just, we're all here doing the thing. And it's. But we all have a love for this stuff that's oh, huge. unique. Yeah. Passion. There's, look, there's race trucks, there's street trucks, there's pre runners, mm -hmm. and we have an appreciation for all that stuff. Yep. Yep. I, I love the off road. The industry's been really good to me, you know, obviously building the product yeah. and getting it out there. And uh, I'm proud that I was able to do it in an industry that's. It's, I mean, you know how hard it is to yeah. really make a living at it. So, um, yeah, it's, it's been very good to me. Yeah, it's crazy. You know, the, I think the, the greatest thing about these three episodes, like the Thomas Collection, I guess it's what we'll probably Thomas call collection. it as the Thomas yeah, Collection, yeah, is, is that, you know, he's a fan of it, yeah. um, which is huge to us. You know, again, like seeing him drive it out there, pre-running, you know, we got, we got the truck that is, is the Raptor, right? That's probably the more attainable build out of all of these guys, right? And it's something that can be used and built and is, is relatable. The White Soul truck is the truck that is the Baja pre-runner. This is the freaking, um, the piece, the art piece. And I think the cool thing is like with the project that Morgan's working on, it's gonna be kind of like- A collaboration of all that A collaboration of, of next, all that stuff. Well, what we're trying to do with that you is know? make it the next level, whatever that is. It's kind of what we think yeah. it is, yeah. right? Yeah. It's not gonna be for everybody and yeah. we don't expect it to be, but, but I would like to have something that has such a uniqueness that when, when people see it, they have an appreciation for it. Absolutely. Right? So the builder, yeah, the, the, yeah. the driver, yeah, you the know, design, the, function. Yeah, the, fu the yeah. function, dude, the yeah. way it And way we're trying works. to do things differently, right? We Absolutely. think out of the box and yeah. we talk about it all the time. Yeah. Yeah. And it is coming out to be something super special. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Well, well, we well, the cool thing about that, too, is that, you know, it's so different. It's so special. But when it does debut, whenever it does, I think people love the journey and the journey that we're trying to take them on. And I think Morgan's taking them on. Um, I'm not you so know, fond of the journey. The journey sucks. <laughs> yeah. the journey, yeah. let, let me hey, tell you. Three days at CMA at SEMA. Yeah. Give me that. Yeah, let, 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 me, let me tell you. The, the journey, the the journey, journey the is journey hard. Is, uh, yeah, but it's a pride swallowing freaking it's hard. exercise. Yeah, it's I mean, hard. dude, I, I'm, I'm But years. when you get it and it's done, it's, it becomes worth sure. it. Right. So, yeah. it's, what, what I'm saying, the cool thing is, is like, the journey is so brutal, but you guys get to see the blood, sweat, tears, and dedication yeah. in it yeah. that comes from it. And I don't think any... Other than like, you know, the hot rods, uh, pre-runners are very special with that, right? So yeah. you get you get taken through the whole thing. Um, but ultimately, like seeing the end product and everything and, and, and getting there is great. But, you know, they say it's not the destination, it's the journey. But it's a story. That's yeah, the same with you, it, Thomas, your story. It's great. Yeah. Uh, but ultimately, it's what peaks I, and valleys, right? Yeah. Yeah. You get a high when you see it and you kind of go, oh, it's taking it You got to wait. Gotta you got to wait. Yeah, got, it's, but, it's but brutal. But nothing worth having ever comes easy, right? right, right. That's life in general. Yeah. And I, I think the whole... The whole circle with this is that ultimately Thomas is building this beast of a pre-runner with I don't even know what the hell it is that MCD one look I don't know what the hell we're gonna call it the what do, Air Force One we were no, calling it for a little bit pre the exotic pre-runner pre yeah. but but the thing is is like yeah some of you guys are be like well dude I'll never be able to get something like that but here's the thing I that, didn't think I would get there th that type of interest is gonna spark other people right to invest in our market to bring new people into our market Absolutely. and and I think that's what it's all about is that. Um, it's going to bring new enthusiasts, new people, new development. Um, you know, maybe other guys like Morgan that want to build pieces like that may come out of it. Maybe other guys like Thomas who have that ability to invest in a project like that may want to come out. And all, all in all, in the end, it only brings more product research and development and more attention to our sport that is this small, right? Yeah. Our sport is this small, but builds like that make us way bigger. Right, and yes. I mean, it's crazy. And, and, and that, that's what I'm saying is like, Although it may seem unattainable to some people, you know, it's not. He, he, here's the thing: it's going to bring more industry, more builders, more long travel people. Some kids going to want. I know it sounds cheesy. Some kids going to see that build at SEMA, 
and freaking it's gonna make him go learn how to weld, learn how to fabricate, mm -hmm. start building stuff, start his own fab shop yep. somewhere else in the country, somewhere else in the world. And that's all Terra Crew wants to do is pump you guys up to do that kind of shit. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, comment, like, subscribe, all that crap to help us grow. Check out Thomas, what he has going on. He, yep. has, his, he has his own Instagram. You guys Please can check out that stuff. Me. Yeah, we'll, we'll have Thomas's stuff on there. Check out Morgan's build progress on that thing. He goes way in depth. And if you guys have ADHD like me, you guys can continue to check out the rest of the stuff on our channel. And uh, if you guys know somebody that has a Colorado, share this with them. Thank you guys for watching. Peace. Appreciate it, guys. So you guys thought this episode was done. It's actually not. Uh, Morgan left, so now we get to have fun. Sorry, Morgan. John, are you coming? Me? You want to get in the back seat? John's here. I'm doing it. What's up, John? I'm going to turn down a chance to ride in a roadster shop truck. <laughs> for one-on-one. Check this out, you guys. This thing is pretty fast, to say the least. Uh, yeah, that's pretty good, huh? It's amazing. I can't believe I'm in this truck right now. Wow. Wow. What do you think of that power, John? Yeah, that's insane. <laughs> <laughs> What do you think of that, Thomas? It's pretty good. First time I drove it in a while. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. Yeah. All right, guys, there you have it. We're gonna hopefully be catching Thomas with this thing out in, this, in the dunes. Maybe, 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 the dunes. maybe we'll take him to Glamis, go have some fun in this thing. Uh, it definitely has the power, to say the least. Um, super stoked on this build. Uh, Thanks for checking out this episode. I guess yeah, this is another fun. ending. Thanks, James. Go, uh, thanks for going for the, the debut ride. Oh, I, I'm so stoked. It's been I, sitting in the corner so long, I need to get out and stretch its legs a little bit, huh? You know what? For, for it sitting in the corner for so long? Oh, my God, dude. I, I, this smile is going to stay here for a little bit. So thanks, Thomas. Thanks for your time. Good times. You guys, check out Thomas's stuff. We're going to freaking be following up with Thomas in the dirt, hopefully, hopefully soon. So keep posted. Later, dudes. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.